A lot of the music I listen to is from various soundtracks, whether it be show tunes or pieces from video games or what have you. Recently, while listening to Tony Jay's glorious performance in Hellfire from Disney's 1996 Hunchback of Notre Dame, I was struck by how odd the use of fire as a metaphor is in the lyrics of this track. Without further ado, let's jump right in and see what the song is trying to say. Beata Maria, you know I am a righteous man. Of my virtue I am justly proud. No fire yet, just Frollo reassuring himself of what a good person he is, which is, of course, a thing that good people do all the time. Also never mind that this movie starts with Frollo murdering an innocent woman on the steps of the most famous cathedral in the world. Moving on. Beata Maria, you know I'm so much purer than the common vulgar weak licentious crowd. Still no fire in the lyrics, but we're getting there. Frollo walks over to his fireplace, and the mood of the visuals has completely shifted, from the steely calm of greys and blues to bright orange and dark shadows. Meanwhile, the last line there shows us how mixed up and entangled Frollo's feelings are. Among the normal insults of calling bad people weak and overly promiscuous, he also calls them out for being common and lacking in sophistication. Neither of those traits are inherently the opposite of righteousness, and indeed the Bible often proclaims the reverse, and this reveals that his feelings about these people are more than a simple matter of piety. It is also his arrogance and scorn for poor people as a noble. This is a good time to note one of the changes Disney made from Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, because in the original book, Frollo was an archdeacon, not a judge. Presumably, hating common people would have still fit as clergy instead of nobility, but not in quite the same way. Anyway, he's already confused about what it is that he feels. On to the next bit. Then tell me, Maria, why I see her dancing there, why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul. Ah, here we are. Without actually using the word, we get our first two references to fire. First, in reference to an attractive feature of Esmeralda's, the movie has previously gone out of its way to show you her striking green eyes, and then to what she does to him. It's almost funny, because the association between attraction as feeling like you're on fire is as old as time, but usually the speaker couches it as a fire welling up within themselves. Minister Frollo, though, phrases it as if she's violently attacking him. You could read this as saying that his conception of himself is simply incompatible with these feelings of sexual attraction, so he projects the source of those feelings onto someone else. I feel her, I see her, the sun caught in her raven hair is blazing in me out of all control. Here we get a reference to the sun, and then that that image is blazing within him. Again, his primary fixation seems to be on what is being done to him. The fire represents feelings that he can't forcibly tamp back down, and that's visibly scaring him. It's also at this point that we get the vision of Esmeralda in the flames of his fireplace. So, regardless of whatever else, it becomes pretty clear that the movie wants us to associate her with fire. Like fire, hellfire, this fire. This part marks an important shift in how he's speaking about what he feels. So important, in fact, that I'm going to put a pin in it for now, because I think it's actually much more interesting, taken together with some lines that come later. We'll be back, but this part deserves proper analysis. It's not my fault. I'm not to blame. It is the gypsy girl, the witch, who set this flame. Here Frollo starts his half-mad assertions that he can't be blamed for what's roiling inside him. And again, we get Esmeralda as the source of the flames, but his tone towards her has shifted dramatically. Instead of using pronouns, she's now Gypsy Girl and Witch. The creeping guilt is making him angry, and again he needs to project that elsewhere. Two important notes here. The first is what the chanting chorus is saying. It's difficult to hear, but they're saying Mea Culpa and Mea Maxima Culpa. 
In case you've been neglecting your Latin, that can be translated as my fault and my most grievous fault. In fact, these phrases appear this way in the Confidior, a prayer often said at the beginning of Roman Catholic Mass. The earlier chorus parts during the calmer parts of the song were also lines from the Confidior. As a pious man, Frollo would know this, so the fact that his subconscious answers his cries of it's not my fault with lines from a prayer of confession is telling as to his state of mind. The second note I want to make is about his specific insult of calling her a witch. Depending on what material you like to consume, the word witch might call to mind either old hags or Emma Watson. However, in some Western traditions, particularly the Greek and the Roman, one of the most important forms of magic a witch possessed was control over her own sexuality. You can actually see this today in many of our words for attractive people, like enchanting or spellbinding or beguiling. Circe and Medea, two of the most famous witches in Greek mythology, use, or are at least accused of using, their sexuality to get what they want, often at the expense of the suckers they reel in. Men didn't particularly like the power an attractive woman could have over them, so they lumped that in with all the other foul and mysterious magical powers they could think of. Here, Frollo seems to be accusing her of using black magic to make him desire her, and of course the Catholic Church wasn't too fond of magic in general. So, instead of just a generic insult like it might be used today, this could be read as a pretty specific and dire condemnation. It's not my fault! If in God's plan, he made the devil so much stronger than a man! What's interesting to me about this section isn't the lyrics, which is mostly more of the same. What sticks out to me is near the end. The chorus, which we've established represents his subconscious bubbling up, dissolves into fire that wraps Frollo all over. Given the amount of times this song has tied his lust to the concept of fire, we can read this as his subconscious being totally consumed by those flames of desire, until even his guilt gives way to them. Me, Maria, don't let the siren cast her spell, don't let her fire sear my flesh and bone. By this point, Frollo has pretty thoroughly cemented that the fire of attraction is something sinister being inflicted on him by Esmeralda. To that end, he's pleading for the Virgin Mary to protect him, and he again associates Esmeralda with wicked magic. And notably, the reference he uses is one to Greek mythology, reinforcing the idea that he's using their version of a witch. Destroy! It's amazing how much can be packed into just three lines. The first thing that jumps out to you is the last one, where Frollo lets slip what he's really feeling. He doesn't really think Esmeralda is some vile creature, otherwise wanting an exclusive relationship with her is pretty weird. The rage at her is just a thin act. At the same time, he seems to want a version of her that really doesn't exist. He's entranced by her beauty, but his attitude in the rest of the song makes it pretty clear he would never actually want to be associated with, much less marry, a commoner, and a Romani one at that. We can see this in how the vision of Esmeralda exits the fire, now made of white smoke. To really embrace her, Frollo would need Esmeralda to fundamentally change her nature, and this is made clear in how his fantasy Esmeralda dissolves into nothing the moment he touches her. The other point is his plea for the Hellfire to obliterate Esmeralda. One thing that is underlying in Abrahamic imagery of Hell is that the flames of Hell are actually a morally good and righteous thing. Believers are supposed to be scared of them, but all the fire does is punish the wicked in the afterlife. If punishing those who do evil is something your religion is interested in, then Hellfire is something you are glad exists. That's the sense in which Frollo is invoking the concept here, as he wants those flames to punish someone he views as sinful. And with that, it's now time to back up to that bit I was talking about earlier. Like fire, hell fire, this fire in my skin, this burning desire is turned. When Frollo first really starts getting into his metaphor, he seems aghast as he makes the association between his lust for Esmeralda and the fires of hell. He talks about how it's hurting him, and that it's driving him to commit sinful acts. 
But if we remember what I was saying a second ago, that concept makes no sense. Hellfire punishes sinners, it doesn't push them to sin in the first place. If Esmeralda's beauty really were like Hellfire, then it would be a good thing, and it would be punishing the wicked people that she comes in contact with. These two sections taken together reveal that Frollo's song is fatally self-contradictory. You could assume that this is Disney throwing around Christian iconography without really thinking about it, but I would tend to give them more credit than that. Instead, these weird inconsistencies seem to represent how confused Frollo is about what he's feeling. Lust and guilt and scorn are all jumbled up and paved over with a thick layer of denial. The weird mixed metaphors are his actual emotions and desires bubbling up through this brave front. Now Esmeralda isn't even Gypsy Girl to him anymore. Again, we get Frollo not seeming to understand what he wants Fire to represent. Why is Hellfire dark? Aren't you trying to use it to punish evil? I doubt Frollo could actually explain it even if you asked him. Alongside again revealing what he actually wants, this is interesting because it's the first reference we get to actual fire in the mortal realm. Rather than praying to God for divine punishment for Esmeralda, Frollo threatens to take matters into his own hands and kill her with fire. This marks a dark turn from passively hoping bad things happen to her to actively planning violence himself. It is also at this point that he finally stops rubbing Esmeralda's scarf on his face and casts it into the fireplace. We can see this as a moment of resolution, where he's no longer wrestling with his lust and is now set on a singularly violent course of action. I should also note that this verse starts after a brief aside in which Frollo learns that Esmeralda has escaped from the cathedral. This loss of control over her could be seen as the reason for his shift towards attacking her. God have mercy on her. God have mercy. Aside from a brief moment of self-awareness in praying for mercy for himself, the interesting change for this section is in the chorus. They're now saying Kyrie eleison, which is a common prayer meaning Lord have mercy. At this point, Frollo's subconscious is no longer refuting what he has to say. Instead, his subconscious and conscious minds are aligned, signaling that we're nearing the end of this tumultuous moment for the minister, and it didn't really resolve the way we would have liked. Instead of asking God for Hellfire, he's now asking for mercy, having decided to take care of that burning part himself. But she will be mine, or she will... And after the clue from the previous lines, it should be no surprise that the end of the song is so blunt and straightforward. No more metaphors or distractions or lying to himself. His entire view on Esmeralda has boiled down to a cruel, murderous ultimatum, and with that the fire goes out. All the roiling, conflicting feelings inside of him, as represented by the fire, have been replaced with cold resolve, and with that moment, the course of the movie's plot is set in stone. I've always liked this song because purely on an aesthetic level I find it rapturous, but as soon as I started to dig into it I found a rich layer of symbolic meaning waiting for me. This multi-layered manner of storytelling is part of why so many people are in love with Disney movies decades after first seeing them, and I count myself among that number. If you enjoy this sort of analysis content, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. It helps grow the channel and makes sure you see all my new stuff as it comes out. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.